ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಜೇಶ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಜೆ ದಿ ಜನರಲ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟರಿ ಆಫ್ ಆಜ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಧೀರಜ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಕನ್ವೀನರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಹೀಬ್ who delivered the welcome address the registrar of jnu dr pramod kumar professor mohan k gautam who delivered the keynote address other dignitaries uh, professor ajay kumar dube dr annapurna pande uh, ambassador anup mudgal uh, professor rajnish shukla uh, dr bbl madhukar ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನೀರಜ್ ಗುಪ್ತಾ ಮಿಸ್ ಮಿಶೆಲ್ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಅಲೋಕ್ ಚಕ್ರವಾಲ್ ಭಾರ್ಗವ್ ಮಿತ್ರ ರಮಾಶಂಕರ್ ದುಬೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪ್ರಿಯಪ್ರತ ಅದರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಶ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಲೇಡೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಜೆಂಟಲ್ಮೆನ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪ್ಲೆಷರ್ ಟು ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ದಿ ಏಜಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅಲೋಕ್ jnu especially on a topic which is a very contemporary one in fact i must thank the aaj and the center for diaspora studies central university of gujarat for this opportunity given to me to present the steps taken by our government to address the concerns of the diaspora during the pandemic friends as we all know the covid-19 pandemic poses an unprecedented challenge to all the countries of the world including india it has changed the way we used to live interact work and socialize our healthcare and associated infrastructure has come under severe stress due to the sudden rise in requirement of isolation beds icu and other life saving facilities initially even segregating the covid patients from known known covid patients at public health facilities posed a significant challenge further india was not producing enough personal protection equipments or life saving drugs and equipments like ventilators domestically the disruption of global supply chain of ppes life saving drugs and equipments due to the pandemic only aggravated the situation the pandemic is a great threat to the livelihood security of millions of our people belonging to the lower lower middle income category mainly due to the disruption of their normal economic activity because of the challenges posed by the pandemic every sovereign government faced a dilemma whether to concentrate on controlling the spread of disease or keep the economy open to ensure livelihood security of one's people our government under the guidance of the honorable prime minister narendra modi ji took a balanced approach of jaan bhi jahan bhi that is emphasis on both life and livelihood India started its flight screening system from 17th January that is a full 13 days before the first case of covid-19 was detected in our country on 30th January screening and the graded travel restrictions were increased step by step from mid January up to March 11 when WHO finally declared covid-19 to be a pandemic measures to propagate social distancing including graded stoppage of international flights and suspension of visas were implemented from march 11 and from march 24 a full nation wide lockdown was imposed the lockdown was truly unprecedented it included for instance stoppage of over 13000 railway passenger services a day for the first time in india's history as a republic we also stopped all flight services most public transport and so on even the who acknowledged 
that our public health responses were proactive, preemptive, and graded. And yet, we maintain continuity of essential services, power supply, water, energy, food products, banking, even delivering essential goods to the entire country. Such measures were inevitable for India because we had no other realistic choice. It's a measure of the acceptance of this need that all political parties in all of India's 28 states and union territories willingly enforced the lockdown. This is because all public authorities in India knew that there were immense variations in availability of medical services and infrastructure within the country. Therefore, an exponential rise in the infection rate could overwhelm our doctors and hospitals. This nationwide lockdown and close observation of the data helped us to upgrade capacity in terms of dedicated COVID hospitals, isolation beds, and ICU beds, ramp up production and procurement of essential PP sets, ventilators, and testing equipments. Our private sector is being fully involved in the quest to make affordable local alternatives. Many of our Indian companies have been producing a large quantity of PPE kits. We have ensured a manifold increase in supply of oxygen for medical purposes since February 1, 2020. Expanded production of pharmaceutical supplies from antipyretic tablets to hydroxychloroquine to meet domestic needs, and we have started supply them to the world. Our Ministry of Commerce has even liberalized exports of India, India-made ventilators to foreign countries. As we increase the capacity to test potential COVID-19 patients, Government of India also co-opted many private labs. Today, India is doing more than a million tests per day and is looking to increase it further. As on date, India has tested more than 5.51 crore samples. We are also developing Indian testing kits to meet escalated demand for more liberalized testing. Our government has also employed advanced technology to track and alert citizens of proximity to COVID-19 cases. This mob, the mobile app called Arugya Setu app is being extensively used by our people, not only to protect themselves from accidental exposure to COVID-19 virus, but also to take precautionary measures in case of such exposure. As on date, there are 15.62 crore citizens using this app. The lockdown has not been easy or without socioeconomic costs. For example, despite public assurances and exhortations from states and the union government, reverse migration from cities could not be stopped, especially in parts of North and West India. This started several days after the lockdown was initiated. But in response, thousands of relief camps and shelters were set up with relief provided by state governments to more than 1.25 million people. Industry and NGOs were also actively involved in this effort. Nationwide food camps were organized and up to 7.5 million people were fed every day. In terms of, in terms of mitigation, the Prime Minister's Garib Kalyan, that is welfare of the poor package, set out rupees 1.7 lakh crore to alleviate the situation of the poor and vulnerable, including farmers and laborers. This includes insurance for 2,20,000 healthcare workers operationalized since 30th March. Food relief measures are being implemented to provide food grains, free food grains and lentils for 80 crore people. LPG cylinders have been provided to 8 crore poor households. Funds are being transferred through our direct cash transfer schemes to poor citizens, senior citizens. Differently able people, people, and to indigent widows. Some 2.8 crore people have received the first tranche, tranche of payments. Impoverished women holding Jandhan program accounts are also re receiving funds through these direct transfer schemes. On top of this, our Prime Minister announced an economic stimulus package of rupees 20 lakh crore roughly 
amounting to 10% of the GDP of our country to revive the economy with a special emphasis on MSMEs. Our government's effort in this direction is still continuing with every sector of the economy getting the due attention they need. Friends, the need, the reason why I have presented all these facts before you is to draw your attention to the unprecedented challenge faced by the government due to the COVID-19 pandemic. While we were working on war footing to address and mitigate the COVID-19 challenges domestically, India never shied away from its responsibility towards its diaspora. As you may be aware, India has 13 million people who are working or living abroad. It has also a large number of people of Indian origin spread across the world. When the pandemic struck, naturally there was a panic among NRIs because of the fear of being stuck in a foreign land separated from their family at a time of great uncertainty. In the Gulf countries where a major chunk of our NRIs are blue collar workers faced the prospects of job loss. Many of them were also at the risk of violating local immigration norms as their visa or work permit was getting over without any realistic possibility of renewal. On top of this, there were cases of emergency. People who went abroad on a short trip with limited money were stuck due to travel restrictions. Educational institutions and hostels were closed, indefinitely throwing the student, student's life out of gear. There were pregnant ladies who had planned their delivery in India but stuck in a foreign country due to travel restrictions. There were elderly people who had ran out of medicines and could not buy them locally due to either non-availability or exorbitant cost. So Government of India had a huge task at its hand and we set out to solve the puzzle one piece at a time. Government of India worked with our partner countries in Gulf and other parts of the world to extend the validity of the existing visas so that our people are not punished for something which is beyond their control. All major countries responded or reacted positively to India's request as our country too had extended similar facilities for foreign nationals on reciprocal basis. In order to bring back our nationals stranded abroad, especially those who required evacuation for emergency reasons, Government of India initiated the Vande Bharat mission on May 7th, 2020. With the launch of the Vande Bharat mission, the massive whole of government effort to respond to the COVID-19 situation entered a new phase. The Vande Bharat mission or VBM, as it is known, is the largest and the most complex exercise ever undertaken by the government for repatriation of our national stranded overseas. It required very close coordination and a smooth flow of inter-ministerial communication involving the Ministry of External Affairs, the Ministries of Civil Aviation, Home Affairs, Health and Family Welfare, as well as the concerned state governments. These operations are being carried out through non-scheduled commercial flights operated by Air India, Air India Express, private chartered flights, ships of the Indian Navy, as well as by land from those countries which share land border with India. An online registration system was devised and was implemented through our missions and posts across the globe. Simultaneously, MEA developed a dynamic online portal called the REPAT portal, on which requests received by the Indian missions from Indian nationals wishing to return were regularly updated. As on 10th September, MEA has received around 12 lakhs requests for repatriation. Initially, passengers were chosen on the basis of compelling grounds cited by them for travel, including those facing deportation by foreign governments, migrant workers, laborers or laborers who have been laid off, non-permanent residents or short-term visa holders faced with expiry of visas, those faced with medical emergency or seeking treatment for terminal illness, pregnant women or elderly, 
those required to return to India due to health of a family member, uh, tourists, uh, visitors stranded abroad, students if their educational institutions or hostels were closed, etc. To better coordinate with the concerned state governments, MEA also designated senior external affairs ministry officials as nodal officers to liaise with the state governments for coordinating flight arrivals directly with the state. The data captured by the MEA has been shared, shared on real-time basis with the state government concern. As the state government level, at the state government level, prior information on the number of passengers per flight and date of arrival along with their health status was a prerequisite to create adequate quarantine and testing cap capacity. One day Bharat Mission took this requirement also into consideration while scheduling the flights. As we speak through BBM, a total of 13,74,237 Indians have returned to India under six BBM phases. Government of India has operated 2,432 Air India flights and 3,758 chartered flights so far to bring back our people stuck abroad. Of this, 1,27,685 have entered India by land from Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh and Myanmar. Through these flights, Kerala received the maximum returnees and UAE is the number one country from where the maximum stranded Indians have come. As we enter the phase six of BBM, Government of India is trying to schedule as many flights as possible in consultations with the Ministry of Civil Aviation for bringing maximum possible number of the stranded Indians back. MEA is closely working with the DGCA, Director General of Civil Aviation, to find innovative ways to cater to the requests of the stranded Indians expeditiously. A decision was taken to allow use of foreign carriers for bringing stranded Indians in remote areas of Latin American countries, Africa and parts of Europe. To further ease international travel, flights from USA, France, Germany, UAE, UK, Afghanistan and Maldives have been allowed on bilateral arrangements, more commonly known as bubble arrangements. Apart from Indian citizens, Government of India has also taken a more considerate approach towards the requirement of, requirements of people of Indian origin, especially the overseas citizens of India, that is the OCI cardholders. Government has allowed the OCI cardholders and few category of, categories of foreign nationals to travel to India subject to certain conditions. These decisions have been taken based on the demand from our diaspora and with a view to reduce delays. Our missions and cons consulates have been facilitating their travel to India through VBM flights. Friends, I think I must conclude here. But before doing so, let me again re-emphasize that the battle against COVID is only half won. The fight is still on. While we have started relaxing most of our, most of our domestic restrictions, most of our domestic restrictions some critical ones still remain in place and international air travel is one among them. But that doesn't mean that government of India is not aware of the needs of our diaspora. So far, our government under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has done whatever it could do, it could to our diaspora given the difficult circumstances we are in. Our government is open to doing more and welcome any suggestions in this regard with open arms and that's the message that i would like you all to carry after today's interaction thank you jayhin